Been wanting to do this project with you guys for a long time. Everything seems to have cooperated pretty good. I found a nice spot with a bunch of roots. This is what we ended up harvesting today. These are, I think I have one hemlock root in here somewhere. But for the most part, these are all yellow birch. And it's one of my favorite roots to work with for a couple of reasons. One is that you get these long runs of root. Like, yes. <laughs> Keep on going. Uh, yes. I'd have a reel with very little taper. So this is going to make really nice sewing material. We're doing here, and he said to mention, is we're making some birch bark vessels. One that I made, and we used it for a long, long time before it finally broke out on the bottom here. And it's because the grain of the bark goes this way. It held up, it held up like I said, for years. We would pick crab apples. Oh. And if we filled this to the brim, that would be a batch of jelly. Yeah. So it's pretty rugged stuff. So the first thing I notice is that the bark is inside out. Well, I'll show you. All right. This is what you'd see on the tree. Okay. And this is all flaky stuff, you know, and this will keep peeling and whatnot, but it's flaky and cracky because it dries out and it becomes brittle and then the tree grows and stretches and, you know, it breaks apart. Stretching is what this stuff does really well. And it's because of this inside bark that has a lot more of that young stretch left to it. And generally they would use that on the outside because it was tougher and it would not peel off in layers like mm -hmm. the outside does. When they make a canoes and things like that, that it would be inside out like this. I was lucky enough to found this in an attic that is an old, probably made for the tourist trade back in say 19 aughts or 1890s or somewhere in that period. But it was made in the same fashion that they've been making them for years and years. You don't see them made like this much anymore. This is how they should be made. You see the rim or gunnel of the basket. The stitches are touching all the way around. You can't see the, get a close -up of that. the actual rim. When I, I was studying this and with intent to learn how to make baskets, basically this little unit right here taught me everything that everything I needed to know so as you can see I tried to duplicate the same technique on the rim makes a much nicer looking basket this one actually had a little bale a little handle like it huh. was used for berry picking or whatever is that what came out here yeah this one here I've been told that they would collect the bark in the winter time I've tried to peel birch trees in the winter time <laughs> I don't know how they would have done it. Didn't but, work out. <laughs> but the bark is stuck to the cambium in a way that once they scrape most of the cambium off, it still has this darker layer. And then they scratch through that to make these designs. Mm -hmm. And you'll see... <laughs> sure. You will see these designs on canoes. It, so they did the same trick for those. But boy, I tell you, peeling birch is a trick in itself when it works good it works real good but when it doesn't want to peel all you get is little pieces <laughs> i've gone ahead here and made a little pattern it helps to do all that pencil work on a piece of paper other than scratching it all up on your bark so i'm going to just draw it trace it on here i'm staying away from the edges to avoid any possible cracks might turn into deal breakers. So birch bark is, is, as we were saying, a really strong material, which you can make canoes and things out of it. And it will outlast the tree. When a tree dies in the woods, it'll eventually tip over and the wood will all rot away, mostly because it, this birch bark is like uh, the tree is wrapped in plastic. Hmm. And so it just rots really fast. But the bark lasts a long, long time. In the old days, builders used to use it for, instead of tar paper, yeah. on the, yeah. before they'd shingle. Yeah. And I've known people recently that have re-shingled an old house and like, it's all birch bark under there. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd just leave that. But. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really tough stuff. You can see all these little dash marks going this way. That's the lay of the grain wraps mm. around the tree. The grain is strong that way. You could pull on that all day long, but pull it this way and it'll split. Uh, yeah. Or bend it. Yeah. yeah. So on part of this basket, obviously we're, we're 
folding it up in four different directions. So two of the directions are going to be right proper with the grain. Right. Uh, the other two are more vulnerable, so you be extra careful. <laughs> but we're going to, um, after I cut it out, we're going to soak it for a little bit, some hot water. A friend of ours, one of our tribesmen said that he takes a wet towel and even an iron over the wet towel and that will bring the bark back to its flexible crust. You kind of want to be careful when you're cutting this out that you don't develop a crack. I like to get rid of the excess stuff or at least make sure that's the part that's doing the bending during the cut. Uh. All right, so this is the shape here. What I'm going to do now is put this into a bucket of hot water and let it soak in there for a little bit while I clean up some of these roots. I am so lucky to have such beautiful roots to play with. Oh my God. What I'm doing is, uh, I, first thing that we're going to sew up are the, the ends here. Okay, it's going to go like that all right so i need relatively short pieces of root for these little short runs those two that i just saved aside are beautiful long roots and they'll that i want to do the rim with <laughs> oh you can hear our noisy neighbors in the background <laughs> cheers cheers <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just seeing all kinds of wonderful stuff. Now I wanted to point out on this, what they would do to reinforce the, the seams is they'd actually lay a piece of root, split root, up the side of the seam and then they'd stitch that down. The other thing that they did is, you notice the shape of this is tapered, okay? There's a reason more than just aesthetics for that. The reason is that when you have a seam on a tapered thing like this, the seam's going up on the grain here, the grain's coming in from two different angles, like chevrons, right? So every time you put a hole through it, you're not on the same grain plane, uh -huh. okay? If you put a series of holes along that same grain plane, there's a good chance it'll split out that way. I think we mentioned that on our quill work. You'll lay out your designs the same way. And in this particular style, the end grain comes up like this all the way around, okay? So you're able to do this close stitching without any worries of it splitting anything out. So it's very clever design, very, very handy. Good thinking. We have some ravens and pigs. And the ravens have found the pigs and they scream at them because they've got little fledglings that they're teaching the, teaching the ropes to. And so they, they yell at the pigs and the pigs go, ah, and run into their house and the ravens fly down and eat their food. <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> ah, it smells so good. You can see that because this is peeling season, that the bark is really coming off quite nicely. By bending it through, it's almost like stripping wiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This I'm stripping out. You can see it's a fairly heavy gauge material here. This is going to be the reinforcement on the edges of the seams. So I don't need a ton of this. This root is very strong. When I'm pulling this stuff up, I'm really pulling on that. And mm. if the root breaks while you're pulling on it, you got the wrong root because <laughs> that's not what you want to start. Yeah. Yeah. Just a different yeah. tree. It's like oak. Okay. Oak roots are brittle. Not very good. I don't know how I stumbled across these yellow birch if I just fell into it by accident or maybe I heard about them or something. But at any rate, Black spruce is the most talked about root. To, yeah, we. I just don't have any on my property. You know, for all time, no matter what was the best material, men, women, humans have always used what they had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for what I got, yellow birch is it. Yeah, it takes very little root to sew one of these things up until you do the rim. Because then it's just like, <laughs> yeah. It's, but the sweet thing is, and you'll see in a minute, that what I'm peeling off here, I'm going to be getting double this because I split it. All right, so that wasn't too miserable. It that all peeled off came off nice and clean. And I'm going to show you what we do to split it. You just kind of get it going in the middle here with your widowed knife. A little bit more of that. Steady your hands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to tremble through this operation. Now, as it's splitting, as it is, you want to keep it in the middle, okay? Yeah, what if it 
it drifts. If it drifts, then you bend the, the heavier side a little bit more uh -huh. than the other side, and it'll draw it back. Because bending it more is actually making it weaker, right? That's right. the concept. Yeah, but this stuff is so long grained, that's why it's so strong, that it's not a difficult trick. See how my thumbs are? And I'm, I'm you yeah. know, it's like a little heart. You can split white oak down like this too for making chair seats and baskets and stuff. Splitting, splitting stuff is, is a lost art. <laughs> and a forgotten craft. Speaking of that, guys gotta check out our, our, our group. The fun with that is that we get to see what y'all are doing too. That's Stockman Originals, Lost Arts and Forgotten Crafts on, on, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, on YouTube. That's where Subscribe, we are. Subscribe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On do that, Facebook. Do that first. <laughs> yeah, if you're on Facebook, look up Stockman Originals, Lost Arts, and the Forgotten Craft. It's an open group, and you can share your own art and crafts. We're big into teaching. I mean, if I know a trick that you don't know, I've, I'm tripping over myself to, to tell you about it. And vice versa, I've learned some things from our people on that group. It's just a great thing. So... If you have a bunch of roots and you didn't need them all or you plan on using them on future projects but you don't want them to dry out, you can put them in a, in a like a Ziploc bag with the, you can throw a little water in if you want and throw them in the freezer mm. and they will be there for you until your wife tells you to get them out of the freezer. <laughs> you can leave them soaking for a while, like a week or two weeks even, but they will darken, the roots will darken. I have a whole lot of blondes I went out with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. This is a beautiful size right here for stitching. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. beautiful. There's no taper. There's no fluctuation yeah. in diameter. Yeah. I'm going to peel it back up to this little junction here. And it's shot four. Shot okay. four. I'm three behind. Yeah. <laughs> here we are. Moment of truth. It's been soaking in the hot water. I'm hoping that the ends are gonna roll up. You roll that up carefully, supporting it with your fingers. Gentle, gentle, gentle. This is a good stiff piece of bark. Close pin. Traditional ancient tool there. Yes, probably. I've already got an issue here. <coughs> Whether I got enough bark to start this part over again. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have to. Did it split? Yeah, it split. That Dark. never happened. Edit. <clears throat> All right, rolling. So we're going to fold this up. I was going the inside. This is like paper bags of olden days. Okay, this is roughly the shape we're after. And do a few adjustments with the scissors. Another traditional tool. Yes. I'm going to fold these in, little ends, and then this part over like that. Oh, I've made a pattern. I'm probably going to trim as I go. So I'm marking where these two come together here. I don't want this overlap, this little juncture too far. So I'm going to take off about a quarter of an inch, trim that up just a tad, and we get to sewing. So now you can see the seam comes down right to the V where the two edges come up. The military, they prefer that as a gig line. Once you gig line straight, that's when your, your opening of your shirt matches the opening of your pants. Uh. And your buckle has to be right on line with that too. It's on. So anyway, we're going to take a piece of this heavier stuff. These are the roots from the yellow birch. They smell very, very good. Cut this as a, a long feather, you know, tapered off. And that's because I'm going to fold this thin end in underneath here. This is what we're going to use for reinforcing the actual seam. I'm going to lay it in like this, okay, on top of the birch bark. I want this nice thin stuff. Cut a little point on it. I'm going to go up. There's a little kink in the, in the root here. I'm going to cut it off there, make it easier for me to deal with. This will make it even easier. Cheerio. Cheers. <laughs> Lovely afternoon here in New Hampshire. I'm using a bone 
all. It's got a long tapered round end to it. And when you start poking a hole through birch bark, you want to do it tenderly, like you love it. You want to drill it in. Okay. As opposed to sort of spearing it. Yeah, if you're abrupt with it, you run a risk of splitting the birch bark out. And if you go slow and twist it in, you're actually pushing the fibers of the bark apart. Bark appreciates that. Now I'm drilling a second hole about a quarter of an inch away from the first hole, which will accommodate this reinforcement. Because I'm going through two layers, I guess I gotta drill a little more aggressive hole. I, I tuck that feathered end in to the corner here of the uh, reinforcement root. It's awkward at first, takes a minute to get everything lined up, but once you get it going, it goes right along pretty good. Ta-da! Our first stitch. So the tail end of the of this stitching root that I got, I, if you can show it in, does that show inside? See how I kind of caught it and pinned it down? Yes, I see how you caught it. Okay, that's important. <laughs> Relatively important. I mean, it's not life or death, but... Okay, so I'm not going to put a stitch here with this piece comes in because I'm going to save that for the, for the vertical seam. So I'm going to jump over here and get that tacked down. Yeah. See? Yeah. And plus I want to leave this band open because I need to, as you can see, the vertical reinforcement gets tucked up underneath what I'm putting on now. But this is already like, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> it's very good. Okay, so I'm past the little junction thing. We're doing good. We're doing good. I'm gonna uh, put another stitch yeah, in it. Bends really nicely. The root is, yeah, yeah. Well, to be able to pull these stitches off, and I'm I'm tugging on it, you know, and a lot of roots would snap right off. You got to pick your your root <laughs> very carefully. So we're I'm gonna put one more stitch in here, but before I do that, cut all this. I'm gonna cut off the end in a feathered fashion so that I can stuff it into the corner there and maybe catch it with that last stitch. And, and everything will be neat and tidy. And does it matter if you feather it from this side or from the top or from the bottom? Uh, I prefer, because I try to bend everything over and leave the, the natural, round, nice mm. finished edge showing. And if I, if I cut it, feather it from the top and bend it, then it'll delaminate and you get like a splintery edge. So right. by doing it from underneath, this outer fiber We'll pull it right around and keep it like this nice and smooth. It won't catch on nothing. A shallow cut so you'll get a nice long taper. Yes, tail to tuck into that hole. Ta-da! You can see on this end, the tail that I had caught with the first stitch so it's like secured so now this is out I'm going to try and squeeze this down through here there now you can see that's tucked in under the last stitch I'm going to trim it off and when that dries it don't go nowhere but I'll trim it off a little long so it never want to go nowhere <laughs> we live in New Hampshire <laughs> We have wood ticks, and yes, wood ticks were <sighs> harmed during the filming of this yes. episode. <laughs> wood ticks were murdered mercilessly, <laughs> repeatedly if necessary. I'm sure I have at least two or three others on me. There sh <laughs> should be. This is the first part, all sewn up. Now we're gonna go up the side here. Just trimming up the reinforcement root. So. I've tapered this off, feathered it down nice. I'm going to slip it up underneath everything in this little juncture here. And there it is. And then we're going to fold it up over like that. And we're going to start stitching her.
See, this reinforcement allows you to really reef down on your stitches without ripping through the birch bark. Birch bark is strong in a lot of ways, but in other ways, not so much. Properly reinforced, though, puts up with a lot of crap. The stitches don't have to be close together, obviously, and actually you wouldn't want them to be because that could compromise the strength of the bark. Right, they, they would rip. Mm. The grain of the bark is going this way, okay? Each stitch is on a different plane of grain. You're not getting two of them on the same line, which can rip it. That's why, I guess I mentioned earlier, why they generally are tapered. I'm gonna kill a tick. Got another one? Yeah, on the shoulder. Uh -huh. Tick tock. <laughs> Still wiggling. I will wiggle for days. What happened to your glass? Some damn leaky glasses they make these days. Oh, did I have one in my hair too? Jeez. You must have got them all. Yep. I like them right heads. <laughs> so, I have the vertical seam pretty well under control. I'm going to stop here with it and do the other side and then when I do the, the rim on it, uh -huh. then we'll tie all this together. We pick back up when the other side is complete. We've got the, the body of it all sewed up. I'm going to trim these support roots thinner so that it's not a big gobby knob there. Uh, try not to cut my threads. You melting yet, Paul? Not yet. So I'm going to use this piece of root that's already split and soaked and quite flexible. Root isn't the straightest root, but it'll make a fun little organic kind of little top around this basket. A couple of little nubbies. You get a, a general idea how long we want it. Go around the rim. There, I think. Yeah, that'll work. All right. This is some nice thin root that I've split. Used it for stitching up the sides. Little limb here will give me a problem if I don't deal with it. Just started raining, folks. <laughs> Birch bark is waterproof, though. Yeah, it is. But we melt. <laughs> so I'm going to do a couple of stitches. This is going to be the, the tail end or the anchored end of the root. So I'm going to put it in from the inside to the out because we want to be stitching from the outside to the in. Uh, when you fold the bark up like this, all the end grain goes up towards the towards the top here. So I've got my hole started here. I can put a hole right next to it. <laughs> and it won't rip out. So when you're playing with the root, you want to make sure or try to make sure that it's not twisted too much. There, I think I found it. Set that through there and I'll have a couple little bumps because I get there's a couple limb thingies on this root that will create a nuisance. That. Yep. <laughs> Another one coming up. That one might want to be actually dealt with. That's a big one. Yeah. Try to whittle those things out of there without compromising the root too much. Or else it's gonna ruin your stitches. You want to support the bark with your fingers, of course, when you're pulling the root through. And now that I'm almost, you know, got a tight loop here, bring it down to smaller. But I want to make sure to tuck this tail into the loop. See that? Yeah. Okay, so that when I would cinch that down, it'll bind that tail out of the way. You'll never see it. It'll never come out. So I'm going to do this again several times. And these are these holes are really close together. Is that just for aesthetics or is that for a structural purpose? Like it's the rim of this, you can see they're really close. Yeah, it's aesthetics mostly because you can get away with, and they do today, get away with much more open stitches. But the one that I am copying, I admired because it had such beautiful rim. And you see how nice tight the stitches are. What I was shooting for anyway. Now I'm gonna do three of these stitches and then I can put my band in my rim. <laughs> she does this every time she wants to go to make an egg. <laughs> Announces it to the world. Wires can be handy in this operation. 
All right, so I've got three little loops here. <coughs> Snugging them up a little bit. Got the tail properly tucked in. Now I'm gonna start to put the root in here. I wanna pull the second stitch so the first stitch tightens up. Around we go pull on the next one. So this holds that root pretty good. Now for sanity's sake, I'm going to... This seems like an important step. Yeah. yeah. Sanity is overrated. <laughs> Actually, it's true. <laughs> How would you know, Paul? That's <laughs> <laughs> what they say, anyway. <laughs> uh, all right, I gotta trim this off a little bit more. So that's, anyway, that's got me kind of held for now, and I'm gonna just continue stitching. This is a beautiful long piece of root. Should get us a ways. When you start working with this root, you will be amazed at how much strength it has. Some roots, not so much, but these yellow birch, quite nice. And as I've mentioned before, too, using an awl with the birch bark, it pushes the fiber of the bark apart, but it doesn't cut it or make an actual hole. Mm. Makes it more of a slot, you know, and that tightens up on itself kind of nicely. Same way a needle in a piece of fabric does kind of yeah between the as opposed to like a glover's needle in leather which actually cuts yeah so it really is close which i guess my concern is that i would make it so close that it turns into one hole well that's the thing with this with the grain of the bark going up like this you can put it very close and it won't it'll always mm -hmm. be that fiber between but if you tried to go along the length of the grain mm -hmm. you would definitely end up with one big gash so we've got that first root took us all the way over here i wanted to show you how you'd splice another piece in see the tail of the first one is all the way in there i'm going to open up that hole just a little bit it's still raining <laughs> and i'm gonna pass the anchor end through that hole okay so i have the tail of the the anchor end of the root sticking through to the front. Now I'm going to make a hole next to it. Bring this new thread, short as it is, over. And cinch that down. Now I've got, that's the anchor to the new thread. Then there's the old one. The old one's going to be lost in the middle. I mean, in the Ooh. inside there. Old one's on the back side? Yeah. Ah, okay, I see it, yeah. And they're both gonna just be, get wrapped right in. And they're all gone. Never all to be seen again. You know, you don't see much of a gobby mess there. There he is. <laughs> It's like, where's my chipmunk? We finished the backpack. Oh, not backpack. <laughs> this is some backpack. Take two. <laughs> yeah, take two. Finished the, the birch basket. Won't hold water. Wasn't designed to. It's more of a basket than a bucket. Picking berries or... Oh, yeah. Oh, they're handy. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Uh, yes. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.